I found that one of the simplest things that I can do to get someone better at hiking very quickly is just to improve their single leg balance. If you think about it, walking and hiking is just a series of single leg balances one after the other. And we can clean up a lot of movement and we can improve a lot of coordination from the foot to the hip and even up into the rib cage by working on improving balance. Now, how would you know if your balance is good or not? Well, it's very simple. Can you close your eyes and stand on one leg for 30 seconds? If you can, you've got pretty good balance. But either way, I think you'll benefit a lot from doing this very simple game that you can do anywhere. All you just need is a couple of rocks, maybe some socks if you're doing it at home, and it will vastly improve your balance. And just off the fact that single leg balancing happens every time that we step, there's a huge amount of improvement that could be made just by training this a little bit and experimenting with it. So grab three objects around the house, follow along and enjoy. So this is the three rock game. It's a great little balance drill to teach you to be very comfortable on one leg. And so we're going to be placing the rock in three different points. It doesn't really matter where. You can place it where, wherever you're comfortable. And then we're going to touch it with the touch it with the toe, just really gently. So obviously, if you do it pretty close, it's quite easy. But if you do it further away, it's going to be more difficult. So it's up to you. And the game is to experiment with how, how far away you can place the object and touch it with your foot. And you'll notice I just picked the rock up with the same hand that I'm balancing on the foot. So that way we can experiment with contralateral and ips ipsilateral patterns. You don't need to know what that is just yet. Just enjoy the game. <laughs> so, see how far away you can get. Let's stay really nice and stacked and heavy on this foot. Let's see how I'm using my back leg as a little bit of a tail as a, a balance aid. So challenge yourself. And see how far away you can get these rocks. You want to be under control the whole time. You know, if you lose your balance, fine, it's all good. I'm really gonna reach this time and see how far I can go. Go to my absolute maximum. Ooh. Okay, so this one out to the right, moving away from the balancing leg. That's pretty easy. Forward. Ooh, that one's tough. This one should be okay. And then I'm gonna pick up with the same hand. It's pretty easy. I can really feel my soleus, my calf, my quads, my glute. Working quite hard to get it done. Now, since I place, since I place this down with my right hand, picking it up with my left hand is gonna be tricky. So I really have to work into my hip. So it's really interesting to see what strategies the body chooses to try and solve this puzzle in the game and it is a game i'd like to think about it like an exercise of course this is a great exercise for getting you to be feeling really stable and balanced on that one leg and moving through all of these various different positions in the hip as you reach as you try and maintain balance it's beautiful and it's fun and all you need is three rocks so aside from what I said earlier about hiking just being a series of single leg balances one after the other, the other reason why I feel this movement is such uh, a useful thing to integrate is that it gets the hips shifting in a lot of different ways. A lot of people think about hip mobility as these really glorious stretches where people are getting into yoga poses and really opening up their hips in the splits. But what's more important, especially for hikers, is literally a hip hike where we have this anonymous bone come up and down and also counter nutation and nutation through the pelvis. 
And so this is a really fun way to express and to experience a lot of that movement in the hip, which is hugely beneficial when you're taking on an unpredictable environment where you could be stepping up, down, left, right, all over the place, rocks moving and unpredictable things happening. And so it's up to you to be able to control what's happening here at the hip. And this is a, a great way to just have some fun and experiment with that rather than being really serious about training it. Of course, if you're really locked up here and you don't naturally have a lot of that movement, then that is going to be something that you need to work on maybe with something a little bit more specific. So this is a side-lying knee to knee. is a really difficult move, but one worth doing because we're engaging the glute and the groin together in order to shift the hips. So lying on your right side in a 90-90, so 90 degree angles in the knees and their ankles, and we want the feet flush against the wall. Now, if you have a skirting board, you're just gonna have to kind of deal with that or put a box or anything that is flat to enable you to press your feet into the skirting board, into the wall. But if there's a little skirting board, that's fine. It's not a big deal if the feet are just kind of slightly different, that's absolutely fine. So we're gonna be lying in that 90-90 position and we wanna be keeping foot contact flush with the wall the whole time. That's really important. Now, a couple of setup issues. We want to be in posterior pelvic tilt. So if your pelvis is really dumped forward, we need to just round the pelvis and come into that scooping posterior pelvic tilt, which you've seen many times already. So you find that a lot of these moves involve that. And then this top knee movement is not just up, but it's also sort of up and forward because we want to create some space in the hip capsule there. So once you're set up, the first cue is that we want to drop the top hip. So in this case, my left hip, I'm gonna try and drop the hip towards the wall whilst maintaining the foot contact. And what will happen there is that you'll find just underneath the abdomen here, there'll be like a little, we'll lose some contact with the floor, that's good. So we want a little mouse hole underneath the abdomen there on the floor side. And what I would recommend is keeping that hand there just so you're making sure that you're lifting the, uh, or dropping the hip and lifting the abdomen correctly throughout the movement. From there, the next part of the movement is lifting the knee. It goes forward and up a little bit, just very small movement, and then keeping the feet flat on the floor, adducting, so pulling in the groin to lift this knee to the other knee. And then we're just doing reps of that. So really slow, very controlled. Knee forward and up, bottom knee up, squeeze, relax and lower down. So top knee forward and up, lower knee up, relax and lower down. So 90 degree angles everywhere, ankles, knees and hips. Really the only two ways you can go wrong with this movement is not dropping this hip so you don't have that mouse hole underneath. And the other thing is as you lift this knee up and forward a little bit, you want to make sure that it is coming forward. You know, a bad rep would be here back with the knee coming backwards because you know you can lift quite a lot more this bottom leg or this bottom knee if this hip and knee is back so what we want to see is the knee sort of traveling up in this direction and forward and then really engage that top glute make sure we're feeling that as we lift the other one together what we're looking to get is a really nice clean contraction of that top glute simultaneously as the other knee comes up. And if we're getting both of those together, you're doing it right. So you might find that you shuffle around a little bit in this position. Um, feel free to you know take a break and reorganize yourself. Keep that posterior pelvic tilt with the hips. Um, take a rest if you need to, but uh, eventually what we're looking to do is to get you know about 10 really good solid reps there where we're engaging the outside of the glute 
the glute max and then the inside of the thigh here as well. And I'd love to know how you found this movement. What was your experience of it? Do you feel like you've got more movement happening in the hip? Do you feel like you've got more contractions happening in the foot and the lower calf? Let me know how you did in the comments below. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm much more interested in talking about. And part of the reason why I stopped doing gear videos is because I want to learn more and I want to share more with things that I think are really important, like how the foot moves, for example. When you're balancing on a single leg, all of these tiny little bones in the foot have to operate. They're cooperating and balancing, and we're getting co-contractions all the way from the bottom of the foot. We're getting the foot to talk to the hip, and we're getting your brain to understand movement outside of just doing normal squats and lunges. So I've been spending a lot more time doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with people, really breaking down what I see as the, the easiest opportunity for improvement in their hiking to get them rotating, to get them walking better. And it's been so enjoyable to see people of all ages making huge improvements from really simple drills like this and other things that I have online. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you probably will like this video, which is three movements that explore a lot more of this rotational stuff. If you wanna take it even further, I would recommend starting with my program, Mountain Proof Ankles, really good for building stability through the foot, learning how to control and connect everything from the foot to the hip. That's all for this video. I know it's been a while. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you on the summit.